Diwali, Deepavali or Dipavali is the Hindu festival of lights, which is celebrated every autumn in the Northern Hemisphere, spring in Southern Hemisphere. One of the most popular festivals of Hinduism, Diwali symbolizes the spiritual victory of light over darkness, good over evil and knowledge over ignorance. Light is a metaphor for knowledge and consciousness. During the celebration, temples, homes, shops and office buildings are brightly illuminated. The preparations, and rituals, for the festival typically last five days, with the climax occurring on the third day coinciding with the darkest night of the Hindu lunisolar month Kartika. In the Gregorian calendar, the festival generally falls between mid-October and mid-November. In the lead-up to Diwali, celebrants will prepare by cleaning, renovating, and decorating their homes and workplaces. During the climax, revelers adorn themselves in their finest clothes, illuminate the interior and exterior of their homes with diyas oil lamps or candles, offer puja worship to Lakshmi, the goddess of prosperity and wealth, light fireworks, and partake in family feasts, where matai sweets and gifts are shared. Diwali is also a major cultural event for the Hindu and Jain diaspora from the Indian subcontinent. The five-day festival originated in the Indian subcontinent and is mentioned in early Sanskrit texts. The names of the festive days of Diwali, as well as the rituals, vary by region. Diwali is usually celebrated 18 days after the Dussehra Dussara, Dussain festival with Dantaras, or the regional equivalent, marking the first day of the festival when celebrants prepare by cleaning their homes and making decorations on the floor, such as Rangoli. The second day is Chodi Diwali, or equivalent in North India, while for Hindus in the south of India it is Diwali proper. Western, Central, Eastern and Northern Indian communities observe Diwali on the third day and the darkest night of the traditional month. In some parts of India, the day after Diwali is marked with the Gavardhan Puja and Diwali Padva, which is dedicated to the relationship between wife and husband. Some Hindu communities mark the last day as Bhai Dooj, which is dedicated to the bond between sister and brother, while other Hindu and Sikh craftsmen communities mark this day as Vishvakarma Puja and observe it by performing maintenance in their workspaces and offering prayers. Some other faiths in India also celebrate their respective festivals alongside Diwali. The Jains observe their own Diwali, which marks the final liberation of Mahavira. The Sikhs celebrate Bandi Kaur Divas to mark the release of Guru Hargobind from a Mughal Empire prison, while Newar Buddhists, unlike other Buddhists, celebrate Diwali by worshipping Lakshmi. The festival of Diwali is an official holiday in Fiji, Guyana, India, Malaysia except Sarawak, Mauritius, Myanmar, Nepal, Singapore, Sri Lanka, Suriname, and Trinidad and Tobago. Topic. Nomenclature and dates Diwali English, or Diwali is from the Sanskrit Dipavali meaning, row or series of lights. The conjugated term is derived from the Sanskrit words dipa, lamp, light, lantern, candle, that which glows, shines, illuminates or knowledge, and avali, a row, range, continuous line, series. The five-day celebration is observed every year in early autumn after the conclusion of the summer harvest and coincides with the new moon, known as the Amasvasya, the darkest night of the Hindu lunisolar calendar. The festivities begin two days before Amasvasya, on Dantaras, and extends two days after, the second day of the first fortnight of the month of Kartik. According to Indologist, Constance Jones who specializes in religious sociology, this night ends the lunar month of Ashwin and starts the month of Kartika. The darkest night is the apex of the celebration and coincides with the second half of October or early November in the Gregorian calendar. The festival climax is on the third day and is called the main Diwali. It is an official holiday in about a dozen countries, while the other festive days are regionally observed as either public or optional restricted holidays in India. In Nepal, it is also a multi-day festival, although the days and rituals are named differently, with the climax being called the Tihar festival by Hindus and Swanti festival by Buddhists. History Diwali is a prominent seasonal festival in India. It is mentioned in Sanskrit texts such as the Padma Purana, the Skanda Purana both of which were completed in the second half of the first millennium CE. 
The Diyas lamps are mentioned in Skanda Kishore Purana as symbolizing parts of the sun, describing it as the cosmic giver of light and energy to all life and which seasonally transitions in the Hindu calendar month of Kartik. King Harsha refers to Deepavali, in the 7th century Sanskrit play Nagananda, as Dipapradipadatsava Dipa Light, Pratipada First day, Utsava equals festival, where lamps were lit and newly engaged brides and grooms received gifts. Rajasekhara referred to Deepavali as Dipamalika in his 9th century Kavyamimamsa, wherein he mentions the tradition of homes being whitewashed and oil lamps decorated homes, streets, and markets in the night. Diwali was also described by numerous travellers from outside India. In his 11th century memoir on India, the Persian traveller and historian Al Biruni wrote of Deepavali being celebrated by Hindus on the day of the new moon in the month of Kartika. The Venetian merchant and traveller Niccolo de Conti visited India in the early 15th century and wrote in his memoir, On another of these festivals they fix up within their temples, and on the outside of the roofs, an innumerable number of oil lamps which are kept burning day and night and that the families would gather, clothe themselves in new garments, sing, dance and feast. The 16th-century Portuguese traveller Domingo Pais wrote of his visit to the Hindu Vijayanagara Empire, where Dipavali was celebrated in October with householders illuminating their homes, and their temples, with lamps. Islamic historians of the Delhi Sultanate and the Mughal Empire era also mentioned Diwali and other Hindu festivals. A few, notably the Mughal Emperor Akbar, welcomed and participated in the festivities, whereas others banned such festivals as Diwali and Holi, as Aurangzeb did in 1665. Publications from the British colonial era also made mention of Diwali, such as the note on Hindu festivals published in 1799 by Sir William Jones, a philologist known for his early observations on Sanskrit and Indo European languages. In his paper on the lunar year of the Hindus, Jones, then based in Bengal, noted four of the five days of Diwali in the autumn months of Aswina Kartika as the following, Bhattashachardasa Yamadarpanam second day, Lakshmipuha Dipanwatha the day of Diwali, Dayuta Pratapat Belapuja fourth day, and Bratri Dwitiya fifth day. The Lakshmipuha Dipanwatha, remarked Jones, was a great festival at night, in honour of Lakshmi, with illuminations on trees and houses. Epigraphy Sanskrit inscriptions in stone and copper mentioning Diwali, occasionally alongside terms such as Dipatsava, Dipavali, Diwali and Divalaj, have been discovered at numerous sites across India. Examples include a 10th-century Rashtrakuta Empire copper plate inscription of Krsna 3 that mentions Dipatsava, and a 12th-century mixed Sanskrit Kannada Sindha inscription discovered in the Isvara temple of Darwad in Karnataka where the inscription refers to the festival as a sacred occasion. According to Lorenz Franz Kielhorn, a German Indologist known for translating many Indic inscriptions, this festival is mentioned as Dipatsavam in verses 6 and 7 of the Ranganatha temple Sanskrit inscription of the 13th century Kerala Hindu king Ravavarman Samgramadira. Part of the inscription, as translated by Kielhorn, reads the auspicious festival of lights which disperses the most profound darkness, which in former days was celebrated by the kings Isla, Kartavirya, and Sagara. As Sakra Indra is of the gods, the universal monarch who knows the duties by the three Vedas, afterwards celebrated here at Ranga for Vishnu, resplendent with Lakshmi resting on his radiant lap. Jain inscriptions, such as the 10th century Sandati inscription about a donation of oil to Janendra worship for the Diwali rituals, speak of Dipatsava. Another early 13th century Sanskrit stone inscription, written in the Devanagari script, has been found in the north end of a mosque pillar in Jalore, Rajasthan, evidently built using materials from a demolished Jain temple. The inscription states that Ramachandracharya built and dedicated a drama performance hall, with a golden cupola, on Diwali. Topic. Religious significance Diwali is celebrated by Hindus, Jains, Sikhs and Newar Buddhists, although for each faith it marks different historical events and stories, but nonetheless the festival represents the same symbolic victory of light over darkness, knowledge over ignorance, and good over evil. 
Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Hinduism. The religious significance of Diwali varies regionally within India. The festival is associated with a diversity of deities, traditions, and symbolism. These variations, states Constance Jones, may reflect diverse local autumn harvest festivals that fused into one pan-Hindu festival with a shared spiritual significance and ritual grammar while retaining local traditions. One tradition links the festival to legends in the Hindu epic Ramayana, where Diwali is the day Rama, Sita, Lakshmana and Hanuman reached Ayodhya after a period in exile and Rama's army of good defeated demon king Ravana's army of evil. Many Hindus associate the festival with Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth and and prosperity, and wife of Vishnu. According to Pinchman, the start of the five-day Diwali festival is stated in some popular contemporary sources as the day goddess Lakshmi was born from Samudra Manthan, the churning of the cosmic ocean of milk by the Devas gods and the Asuras demons, a Vedic legend that is also found in several Puranas such as the Padma Purana, while the night of Diwali is when Lakshmi chose and wed Vishnu. Along with Lakshmi, who is representative of Vaishnavism, Ganesha, the elephant-headed son of Parvati and Shiva of Shaivism tradition, is remembered as one who symbolizes ethical beginnings and the remover of obstacles. Hindus of eastern India associate the festival with the goddess Durga, or her fierce avatar Kali, Shaktism, who symbolizes the victory of good over evil. Hindus from the Braj region in northern India, parts of Assam, as well as southern Tamil and Telugu communities view Diwali as the day the god Krishna overcame and destroyed the evil demon king Narakasura, in yet another symbolic victory of knowledge and good over ignorance and evil. Trade and merchant families and others also offer prayers to Saraswati, who embodies music, literature and learning and Kubera, who symbolizes book-keeping, treasury and wealth management. In western states such as Gujarat, and certain northern Hindu communities of India, the festival of Diwali signifies the start of a new year. Mythical tales shared on Diwali vary widely depending on region and even within Hindu tradition, yet all share a common focus on righteousness, self inquiry, and the importance of knowledge, which, according to Lindsay Harlan, an Indologist and scholar of religious studies, is the path to overcoming the darkness of ignorance. The telling of these myths are a reminder of the Hindu belief that good ultimately triumphs over evil. Topic: <inaudible> Jainism. Jeffrey Long, a scholar of Jain and Hindu studies, states that in Jain tradition, Diwali is celebrated in observance of Mahavira Nirvana Devas, the physical death and final nirvana of Mahavira. The Jain Diwali celebrated in many parts of India has similar practices to the Hindu Diwali, such as the lighting of lamps and the offering of prayers to Lakshmi. However, the focus of the Jain Diwali remains the dedication to Mahavira. This practice of lighting lamps first began on the day of Mahavira's death in 527 BCE according to the Jain tradition, where 18 kings who had gathered for Mahavira's final teachings issued a proclamation that lamps be lit in remembrance of the Great Light, Mahavira. This traditional belief of the origin of Diwali, and its significance to Jains, is reflected in their historic artworks such as paintings. Sikhism Sikhs celebrate Bandi Kaur Divas in remembrance of the release of Guru Hargobind from the Gwalior Fort prison by the Mughal Emperor, Jahangir, and the day he arrived at the Golden Temple in Amritsar. According to J.S. Grewal, a scholar of Sikhism and Sikh history, Diwali in the Sikh tradition is older than the sixth Guru Hargobind legend. Guru Amar Das, the third guru of the Sikhs, built a well in Goindwal with 84 steps and invited Sikhs to bathe in its sacred waters on Baisakhi and Diwali as a form of community bonding. Over time, these spring and autumn festivals became the most important of Sikh festivals and holy sites such as Amritsar became focal points for annual pilgrimages. The festival of Diwali, according to Ray College, highlights three events in Sikh history, the founding of the city of Amritsar in 1577, the release of Guru Hargobind from the Mughal prison, and the day of Bhai Mani Singh's martyrdom in 1738 as a result of his failure to pay a fine for trying to celebrate Diwali and thereafter refusing to convert to Islam. <laughs> Buddhism Diwali is not a festival for most Buddhists, with the exception of the Nuar people of Nepal who revere various deities in the Vajrayana Buddhism and celebrate Diwali by offering prayers to Lakshmi. 
Newar Buddhists in Nepalese valleys also celebrate the Diwali festival over five days, in much the same way, and on the same days, as the Nepalese Hindu Diwali Tihar festival. According to some observers, this traditional celebration by Newar Buddhists in Nepal, through the worship of Lakshmi and Vishnu during Diwali, is not syncretism but rather a reflection of the freedom within Mahayana Buddhist tradition to worship any deity for their worldly betterment. Description Diwali is a five-day festival, the height of which is celebrated on the third day coinciding with the darkest night of the lunar month. During the festival, Hindus, Jains and Sikhs illuminate their homes, temples and work spaces with diyas, candles and lanterns. Hindus, in particular, have a ritual oil bath at dawn on each day of the festival. Diwali is also marked with fireworks and the decoration of floors with rangoli designs. Food is a major focus with families partaking in feasts and sharing matai. The festival is an annual homecoming and bonding period not only for families, but also for communities and associations, particularly those in urban areas, which will organize activities, events and gatherings. Many towns organize community parades and fairs with parades or music and dance performances in parks. Some Hindus, Jains and Sikhs will send Diwali greeting cards to family near and far during the festive season, occasionally with boxes of Indian confectionery. Diwali is a post-harvest festival celebrating the bounty following the arrival of the monsoon in the subcontinent. Depending on the region, celebrations include prayers before one or more Hindu deities, the most common being Lakshmi. According to David Kinsley, an Indologist and scholar of Indian religious traditions particularly in relation to goddess worship, Lakshmi symbolizes three virtues, wealth and prosperity, fertility and abundant crops, as well as good fortune. Merchants seek Lakshmi's blessings in their ventures and will ritually close their accounting year during Diwali. Fertility motifs appear in agricultural offerings brought before Lakshmi by farming families, who give thanks for the recent harvests and seek her blessings for prosperous future crops. A symbolic piece of traditional fertilizer, a dried piece of cow dung, is included in the ensemble in Odisha and Deccan region villages, an agricultural motif according to Kinsley. Another aspect of the festival is remembering the ancestors. Rituals and preparations for Diwali begin days or weeks in advance, typically after the festival of Dushara that precedes Diwali by about 20 days. The festival formally begins two days before the night of Diwali, and ends two days thereafter. Each day has the following rituals and significance. Donteras Day 1 Donteras, derived from Don meaning wealth and Teras meaning 13th, marks the 13th day of the dark fortnight of Kartik and the beginning of Diwali. On this day, many Hindus clean their homes and business premises. They install diyas, small earthen oil-filled lamps that they light up for the next five days, near Lakshmi and Ganesha iconography. Women and children decorate doorways within homes and offices with rangoli, colorful designs made from rice flour, flower petals and colored sand, while the boys and men decorate the roofs and walls of family homes, markets and temples. The day also marks a major shopping day to purchase new utensils, home equipment, jewelry, firecrackers and other items. On the evening of Donteras, families offer prayers puja to Lakshmi and Ganesha, and lay offerings of puffed rice, candy toys, rice cakes, and batashas. Hollow sugar cakes. According to Tracy Pinchman, Donteras is a symbol of annual renewal, cleansing, and an auspicious beginning for the next year. The term, Don, for this day also alludes to the Ayurvedic icon Donvantari, the god of health and healing, who is believed to have emerged from the churning of cosmic ocean on the same day as Lakshmi. Some communities, particularly those active in Ayurvedic and health-related professions, pray or perform haven rituals to Donvantari on Donteras. <laughs> Chodi Diwali, Naraka Chatterdasa Day 2 Chodi Diwali, also known as Naraka Chatterdasa, is the second day of festivities coinciding with the 14th day of the second fortnight of the lunar month. The term, Chodi means little, while Naraka means hell and Chatterdasa means 14th. The day and its rituals are interpreted as ways to liberate any souls from their suffering in Naraka or hell, as well as a reminder of spiritual auspiciousness. 
For some Hindus, it is a day to pray for the peace to the mains, or deified souls of one's ancestors and light their way for their journeys in the cyclic afterlife. A mythological interpretation of this festive day is the destruction of the Asura demon Narakasura by Krishna, a victory that frees 16,000 imprisoned princesses kidnapped by Narakasura. Naraka Chaturdasa is also a major day for purchasing festive foods, particularly sweets. A variety of sweets are prepared using flour, semolina, rice, chickpea flour, dry fruit pieces powders or paste, milk solids mava or koya, and clarified butter ghee. According to Goldstein, these are then shaped into various forms, such as ladus, barfis, halva, kachoris, shrikhand and sandesh, rolled and stuffed delicacies, such as maladu, susiam, patukadalai. Sometimes these are wrapped with edible silver foil vark. Confectioners and shops create Diwali-themed decorative displays, selling these in large quantities, which are stocked for home celebrations to welcome guests and as gifts. Families also prepare homemade delicacies for the main Diwali day. Chodi Diwali is also a day for visiting friends, business associates and relatives, and exchanging gifts. This day is commonly celebrated as Diwali in Tamil Nadu, Goa, and Karnataka. Some South Indian Hindus receive an oil massage and then take a ritual bath. Many visit their favorite Hindu temple. Topic: <inaudible> Diwali, Lakshmi Puja, Day Three. The third day is the height of the festival and coincides with the last day of the dark fortnight of the lunar month. This is the day when Hindu, Jain, and Sikh temples and homes are aglow with lights, thereby making it the festival of lights. The youngest members in the family visit their elders, such as grandparents and other senior members of the community, on this day. Small business owners give gifts or special bonus payments to their employees between Donteras and Diwali. Shops either do not open or close early on this day allowing employees to enjoy family time. Shopkeepers and small operations perform puja rituals in their office premises. Unlike some other festivals, the Hindu typically do not fast on Diwali, rather they feast and share the bounties of the season at their workplaces, community centers, temples and homes. As the evening approaches, celebrants will wear new clothes or their best outfits, teenage girls and women in particular wear saris and jewelry. At dusk, family members gather for the Lakshmi Puja, although prayers will also be offered to other deities, such as Ganesha, Saraswati, Rama, Lakshmana, Sita, Hanuman, or Kubera. The lamps from the puja ceremony are then used to light more earthenware lamps, which are placed in rows along the parapets of temples and houses, while some diyas are set adrift on rivers and streams. After the puja, people go outside and celebrate by lighting up paddock fireworks together, and then share a family feast and matai sweets, desserts. The puja and rituals in the Bengali Hindu community focus on Kali, the goddess of war, instead of Lakshmi. According to Rachel Fell McDermott, a scholar of South Asian, particular Bengali, studies, in Bengal during Navaratri Dussehra elsewhere in India the Durga Puja is the main focus, although in the eastern and northeastern states the two are synonymous, but on Diwali the focus is on the Puja dedicated to Kali. These two festivals likely developed in tandem over their recent histories, states McDermott. Textual evidence suggests that Bengali Hindus worshipped Lakshmi before the colonial era, and that the Kali Puja is a more recent phenomenon. Contemporary Bengali celebrations mirror those found elsewhere, with teenage boys playing with fireworks and the sharing of festive food with family, but with the Shakti goddess Kali as the focus. On the night of Diwali, rituals across much of India are dedicated to Lakshmi to welcome her into their cleaned homes and bring prosperity and happiness for the coming year. While the cleaning, or painting, of the home is in part for goddess Lakshmi, it also signifies the ritual, reenactment of the cleansing, purifying action of the monsoon rains, that would have concluded in most of the Indian subcontinent. Vaishnava families recite Hindu legends of the victory of good over evil and the return of hope after despair on Diwali night, where the main characters may include Rama, Krishna, Vimana or one of the avatars of Vishnu, the divine husband of Lakshmi. At dusk, lamps placed earlier in the inside and outside of the home are lit up to welcome Lakshmi. Family members light up firecrackers, which some interpret as a way to ward off all evil spirits and the inauspicious, as well as add to the festive mood. According to Pinchman, who quotes Raghavan, this ritual may also be linked to the tradition in some communities of paying respect to ancestors. Earlier in the season's fortnight, some welcome the souls of their ancestors to join the family for the festivities with the Mahalaya. 
The Diwali night's lights and firecrackers, in this interpretation, represent a celebratory and symbolic farewell to the departed ancestral souls. The celebrations and rituals of the Jains and the Sikhs are similar to those of the Hindus, where social and community bonds are renewed. Major temples and homes are decorated with lights, festive foods shared with all, friends and relatives remembered and visited with gifts. Anakit, Padwa, Gavardhan Puja day four. The day after Diwali is the first day of the bright fortnight of the Luni solar calendar. It is regionally called as Anakit, Heap of Grain, Padwa, Govardhan Puja, Bali Pratipada, Bali Padayami, Kartik Shukla Pratipada and other names. According to one tradition, the day is associated with the story of Bali's defeat at the hands of Vishnu. In another interpretation, it is thought to reference the legend of Parvati and her husband Shiva playing a game of Dayuta dice on a board of twelve squares and thirty pieces, Parvati wins. Shiva surrenders his shirt and adornments to her, rendering him naked. According to Handelman and Shulman, as quoted by Pinchman, this legend is a Hindu metaphor for the cosmic process for creation and dissolution of the world through the masculine destructive power, as represented by Shiva, and the feminine procreative power, represented by Parvati, where twelve reflects the number of months in the cyclic year, while thirty are the number of days in its lunisolar month. This day ritually celebrates the bond between the wife and husband, and in some Hindu communities, husbands will celebrate this with gifts to their wives. In other regions, parents invite a newly married daughter, or son, together with their spouses to a festive meal and give them gifts. In some rural communities of the north, west, and central regions, the fourth day is celebrated as Gavardhan Puja, honoring the legend of the Hindu god Krishna saving the cowherd and farming communities from incessant rains and floods triggered by Indra's anger, which he accomplished by lifting the Gavardhan mountain. This legend is remembered through the ritual of building small mountain like miniatures from cow dung. According to Kinsley, the ritual use of cow dung, a common fertilizer, is an agricultural motif and a celebration of its significance to annual crop cycles. The agricultural symbolism is also observed on this day by many Hindus as Anakit, literally, mountain of food. Communities prepare over 100 dishes from a variety of ingredients, which is then dedicated to Krishna before shared among the community. Hindu temples on this day prepare and present mountains of sweets to the faithful who have gathered for darshan visit. In Gujarat, Anakit is the first day of the new year and celebrated through the purchase of essentials, or sabras literally, good things in life, such as salt, offering prayers to Krishna and visiting temples. By Duj, Bao Bij day five. The last day of the festival is called by Duj literally, brother's day. By Tilak or by Fonta. It celebrates the sister brother bond, similar in spirit to Ruksha Bundan, but it is the brother that travels to meet the sister and her family. This festive day is interpreted by some to symbolize Yama's sister Yamuna welcoming Yama with a Tilaka, while others interpret it as the arrival of Krishna at his sister's, Subhadra, place after defeating Narakasura. Subhadra welcomes him with a Tilaka on his forehead. The day celebrates the sibling bond between brother and sister. On this day the womenfolk of the family gather, perform a puja with prayers for the well-being of their brothers, then return to a ritual of feeding their brothers with their hands and receiving gifts. According to Pinchman, in some Hindu traditions the women recite tales where sisters protect their brothers from enemies that seek to cause him either bodily or spiritual harm. In historic times, this was a day in autumn when brothers would travel to meet their sisters, or invite their sister's family to their village to celebrate their sister brother bond with the bounty of seasonal harvests. The artisan Hindu and Sikh community celebrates the fourth day as the Vishvakarma Puja Day. Vishvakarma is the presiding Hindu deity for those in architecture, building, manufacturing, textile work, and crafts trades. The looms, tools of trade, machines, and workplaces are cleaned, and prayers offered to these livelihood means. Other traditions and significance During the season of Diwali, numerous rural townships and villages host milas, or fairs, where local producers and artisans trade produce and goods. A variety of entertainments are usually available for inhabitants of the local community to enjoy. The womenfolk, in particular, adorn themselves in colorful attire and decorate their hands with henna. Such events are also mentioned in Sikh historical records. 
In the modern day, Diwali Mela are held at college, or university, campuses or as community events by members of the Indian diaspora. At such events a variety of music, dance and arts performances, food, crafts and cultural celebrations are featured. Economics Diwali marks a major shopping period in India, and is comparable to the Christmas period in terms of consumer purchases and economic activity. It is traditionally a time when households purchase new clothing, home refurbishments, gifts, gold, jewellery, and other large purchases particularly as the festival is dedicated to Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth and prosperity, and such purchases are considered auspicious. According to Rao, Diwali is one of the major festivals where rural Indians spend a significant portion of their annual income, and is a means for them to renew their relationships and social networks. Other goods that are bought in substantial quantities during Diwali include confectionery and fireworks. In 2013, about 2,500 crore rupees $350 million of fireworks were sold to merchants for the Diwali season, an equivalent retail value of about 5,000 crore rupees $700 million, according to the Times of India. ASSOCHAM, a trade organization in India, forecasted that online shopping alone to be over 30,000 crore rupees $4.2 billion over the 2017 Diwali season. About two-thirds of Indian households, according to the ASSOCHAM forecast, would spend between 5,000 rupees $70 and 10,000 rupees $140 to celebrate Diwali in 2017. Topic. Politics Diwali has increasingly attracted cultural exchanges, becoming occasions for politicians and religious leaders worldwide to meet Hindu or Indian origin citizens, diplomatic staff or neighbours. Many participate in other socio-political events as a symbol of support for diversity and inclusiveness. The Catholic Dicastery Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, founded as Secretariat for Non-Christians by Pope Paul VI, began sending official greetings and Pope's message to the Hindus on Diwali in the mid-1990s. Many governments encourage or sponsor Diwali-related festivities in their territories. For example, the Singaporean government, in association with the Hindu Endowment Board of Singapore, organizes many cultural events during Diwali every year. National and civic leaders such as Prince Charles have attended Diwali celebrations at prominent Hindu temples in the UK, such as the Swaminarayan Temple in Nia's Den, using the occasion to highlight contributions of the Hindu community to British society. Since 2009, Diwali has been celebrated every year at 10 Downing Street, the residence of the British Prime Minister. Diwali was first celebrated in the White House by George W. Bush in 2003 and was given official status by the United States Congress in 2007. Barack Obama became the first president to personally attend Diwali at the White House in 2009. On the eve of his first visit to India as President of the United States, Obama released an official statement sharing his best wishes with those celebrating Diwali. Every year during Diwali, Indian forces approach their Pakistani counterparts at the border bearing gifts of traditional Indian confectionery, a gesture that is returned in kind by the Pakistani soldiers who give Pakistani sweets to the Indian soldiers. Issues Air pollution The tradition of annual Diwali fireworks has caused widespread coverage in Indian media, where debate has centered on air quality within Indian cities in autumn and winter and the role the fireworks play. On 9 October 2017, the Supreme Court of India banned the sale, but not use, of fireworks in Delhi during the Diwali season, with the assumption that banning the use of fireworks would substantially improve the air quality of Delhi. Critics stated that the ruling was judicial overreach and a bias against Hindu culture, while supporters stated that it would be beneficial to public health. Scholars have stated that many factors contribute to the poor air quality in Delhi, and northern India, that accompanies the harvest festival of Diwali. According to Jethva and others, the post monsoon custom is to prepare the crop fields by deliberately burning the residual stubble between October and November. As crop productivity per hectare has increased with mechanized harvesting, this has led to the practice becoming more widespread in the northern and northwestern regions of India in the months when Diwali is observed. 
The smoke from the burning of the fields is carried by seasonal winds over the floodplain, where it is inverted by the colder winds and spread throughout the region for much of the winter. Other contributors to the poor air quality include daily vehicular and industrial activity along with the burning of other biomass. According to Shivani, the PM2.5 levels in 2015 and 2016 did rise over Diwali, but these higher levels were a result of contribution from fireworks on the Diwali night, trans regional movement of pollutants due to crop residue burning, low wind speed, and high humidity. They also concluded that the contribution of the festival fireworks could lead to a 1.3% increase in the non carcinogenic hazard index. Other studies have stated that the fireworks of Diwali produce particulates and pollutants with a decay lifetime of about one day. Burn injuries The use of fireworks also causes an increase in the number of burn injuries in India during Diwali. One particular firework called Anar fountain has been found to be responsible for 65% of such injuries, with adults being the typical victims. Most of the injuries sustained are group 1 type burns minor requiring only outpatient care. Diwali prayers The prayers vary widely by region of India. An example Vedic prayer from Burhadaranyaka Upanishad celebrating lights is the Pavamana mantra. Translation See also Galangan, the Balinese Hindu festival of Dharma's victory over a Dharma Hanukkah, the Jewish festival of lights Lantern festival, the Chinese festival of lanterns St. Lucis Day, the Christian festival of lights Walpurgis Night, the German festival of bonfires Notes References Bibliography Topic. External links The Ancient Origins of Diwali, India's Biggest Holiday, Becky Little 2017. Diwali Down Under, Transforming and Performing Indian Tradition in Aotearoa, New Zealand, H. Johnson and G. Figgins 2014. From Holi to Diwali in Fiji, An Essay on Ritual and History, John D. Kelly 1988.